Hi, this is Chen Yumi, and this is my story of how I became digitally literate. My first memories of using anything related to technology was the family computer which had a cartridge like this and the Game Boys. But what really started my interest in technology was when my parents gave me my first cell phone, the Nokia 5110. I remember during elementary school, I had my first cellular phone and I was very amazed with how a wireless phone was able to send a text message or call someone from another city. After a couple of years, I learned that not only can you text or call someone from another city, but another country as well. These are just some of the phones that were available during that time. And I remember my phone had a built-in game called Snake and I was addicted to it. The goal of the game was to catch the apple and make your snake as long as possible without hitting itself. At about the same time, my school started to have a new curriculum, which included a computer class. That was the very first time I ever saw a computer. My memory of the first class is pretty vague, but what I do remember was that I used, for the very first time, a floppy disk that looks like this. You use the floppy disk to store memory, and you insert it in a floppy disk reader that looks like this. It is so much different from memory storage nowadays, but seeing it for the first time at such a young age really blew my mind. I was also able to use an electronic printer for the very first time. It was just black and white by then, and it printed your document line by line. Okay, yes, that was pretty slow, but it was so much better than writing everything, right? And it was also way more convenient than the typewriter, where you had to type in your characters one by one. And although it's fun to look at it now, it wasn't really too much fun back then. Imagine if you had to write a 2,000 word essay or a 20 page research. It would take a really, really long time for you to finish. Or if you didn't press the key hard enough, you will have to go back and press that key again. Imagine doing that over and over again until you finish your essay. But the worst part was, if you made a mistake, you'd have to go back, put white out, wait for it to dry, and then move on. But then sometimes your paper will look like this. As I grew older, the technology became smarter. During high school, I had my first experience with connecting to the internet, the dial-up connection. What I vividly remember about it was that it made a very weird sound. And although it was very slow compared to the connection today, I didn't really care about the speed of it back then, because being able to connect to the internet at that time was very new to me. I was also able to use MIRC. A chatting environment that was not the easiest to use, but very interesting. And that was the very first time I used the computer to chat with someone from another country. This is how it looked like. Since I was a fan of games and was an avid fan of the family computer and Game Boys, when games became available in the computers, I was addicted to them. One game I particularly remember loving was Chips Challenge. It was a puzzle game where you just had to figure out where to go and how to collect the items that you need. So here you just push the blocks, put them in water to be able to pass, you avoid the critters, collect the chips, and finish the level. During my first year of nursing school, I owned my first smartphone. It was the first generation iPhone and it was the most magical device I have ever seen. And then around my third year of nursing school, I owned my first laptop. It was a Sony Vio and it was the most convenient piece of equipment I have ever owned in my life. Especially because I started to have a lot of projects, case studies, and reports to write. But since Wi-Fi wasn't really available back then, 
I had to use Ethernet ports to connect to the internet. It was still hard to do research and I still had to go to the library almost every day to read a ton of books to prepare for my case studies and to prepare for my reports. And since digital presentations wasn't really available at that time, our case studies were all written in manila paper and that's the visual aid we used for our presentations. Since we had to stick them to the blackboard, we had to stick a lot of them at the same time. Just like this. Fast forward to today, presenting is much more comfortable and faster. If you haven't made any digital presentations at all, it's not as daunting as you think it would be. Here's a short tutorial of how to do Microsoft PowerPoint. So when you click the icon, it takes you to this screen. You press New, and if you're more on the creative side, you can use a blank presentation and just use your template. Or choose your photo. But if you want to make your life so much easier, you can choose a ready-made template like what we're going to be doing today. Just double click. It will take you to the template. Then you can just click to add the title. And then you can click here to add another line. You can right click this and you can either duplicate the slide or then you can press backspace to delete it. You can then create a new slide then choose the layout that you want. You can add a title. Then it will populate or it will give you suggestions on how you want to design it. So let's choose this one. And there are several options for you here. You can really choose whatever you want. Next, we can add another slide. Let's add a blank one. Then what you can do is, you can actually insert a picture. So you click insert, and let's look for photos online. Let's choose the plane. Click that, click insert, there it is. You can resize it. You can rotate. Whatever you want to do, really. Then we can also insert a photo from our files. So let me choose this one. And the really cool thing about PowerPoint is that we can add transitions or animations. For this one, we want our plane to fly in. So that's how you do that. And then you have a lot of options actually. And you can change where it comes from. And you can also change how the timing is. Then let's do this one. Let's look for another effect. Let's choose this. And also, you can do the exact same thing with your text. That looks nice. And so you can also preview it before you make your slideshow. And then you can click slideshow. And there you go. That is your PowerPoint presentation. It wasn't really that hard, right? Pretty straightforward. And so thank you for watching. Until next time, bye!